Hey YouTube, I'm LA and thank you for watching The Literary Layer. In this video, we're going to be discussing my October reads and this is going to be a wrap up for the month. pack as much fun as I could, as much fiction as I could into October because in November I'm going to be doing non-fiction November. Some of this is kind of new for me. As I said in my um, reading vlog video, if you haven't seen that one, the blind date with a book video, I did mention that I typically don't read horror and I've been getting into it lately and it was a pretty fun time. It wasn't actually as scary as I thought that it would be. So I'm going to start off by telling you what the book is, give you a bit of a summary about it, and at the end of the video, I'll let you know how I rated it. And these are in no particular order. Now, the first one is Dim Sum of All Fears, and this one is by Vivian Chen. This is a part of her series, a noodle shop mystery series, and this one is the second in the series. So I also read the first one, I read that one last year, and in this one and the second one, it's kind of similar they have a cozy community like an Asian town um, in Cleveland, Ohio, where they have a bunch of Asian people. They own their own businesses and they're all a pretty close knit community. So this one's a cozy mystery in which the main character realizes that the couple that just moved in next door as business owners ended up murdered. And she goes on a search to find out who murdered this person. Now, I didn't really give any spoilers because this happens like within the first few pages, the first chapter, it tells you that this couple ended up murdered. This was a good cozy mystery, but I did prefer the first one. So I'm going to try the third one, maybe sometime next year to see if I want to continue with this series. But at this point, I am not that interested in moving on to the next one. So we'll see how the next one goes, maybe next year. The second one is Ghost Eaters, and this is by Clay McLeod Chapman. And if you saw my blind date with the book reading vlog, this is the book that I ended up selecting. And this one, and in this one, if you look at the cover, it does look pretty creepy, but the book itself was not that scary. I would say it wasn't really scary at all. Um, on a scale of one to 10, I'd give it a scare factor of maybe one, one and a half. But um, it was a pretty good book. In this book, the main character, Erin, she is in a toxic relationship with her ex-boyfriend, Silas, and they're really close friends, but she can't seem to shake him. Like, he has a bad drug problem, and he ends up actually dying in the book. Her and her other friends, they end up taking this drug called Ghost because they want to talk to Silas on the other side. There are some things that Erin doesn't forgive herself for, and she really wants closure with Silas. She really wants to still be connected to him, even though he was toxic in her life. So when they take this drug called Ghost, it actually lets them be able to see the dead. So they're able to see spirits. And this is something that Erin can't shake. No matter where she goes, she ends up seeing spirits. There were some parts of this where I had no clue of what was going on in the story, and there were some that really drew me in. Um, it kind of, I did see a review where someone said that it feels like this book was actually supposed to be, it should be three different novels. And I can agree with that because I feel like the ending could have been something different. It seems like the author maybe was originally going in one direction and just at the last minute changed it because I don't really think that it went with the story and I think it could have had a different ending. But overall, I say this was a good book. The next one I've heard a lot about, I've had this book for a while and this is Rain Shout by Peter Jelly Clark. This one is a cosmic horror, which I'm not sure if I'm a fan of. I think this is probably my first cosmic horror book that I read. And if this is what the rest of them, rest of them are like, I don't think I'll be picking up any others. I do have one other cosmic horror, which is a little bit longer. So I'm going to try that one. And if I like that one, I'll know that I like cosmic horror and I just didn't like this book. So, I don't know, we'll see. In this book, it's set in the South where a group of black women, they go out to hunt these demons called the Ku Kluxes. And I can't really say what else happened. I really don't know what else happened in the plot because I wasn't that into it. 
but I did finish it and I don't even remember what happened at the end of the book. I don't know if I even DNF this and don't remember it. But yeah, uh, this one I did not enjoy at all. It was a good idea, good concept. I was really looking forward to it, but it just didn't hit the mark for me. And the next one is Tender is the Flesh. This is by Augustina Bastarica. I also just posted a video on this one if you haven't seen that one, in which I go into more detail and ask a few questions about this book. Now, this one is very disturbing. Full gore. It's a very bloody read, and it might be difficult for some people to read this. But in this book, um, animals have, been, have contracted a virus, and animals are no longer safe for consumption, for human consumption. So instead of eating animals, um, the people begin to become cannibals and they begin to breed humans for human, cons for human consumption instead of eating animal meat. So they have factories worldwide and this is eventually legalized. In the first half of the book, it really just seems like it's just brutal just to be brutal. But towards the end, it has more of a story in which you get more involved in the characters as you go along and it doesn't have a sad ending. So if you haven't watched my previous video, Tender is a Flesh, let's talk about it. Go ahead and check that one out and I'll link that one up above. So the next one is In a Dark, Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. And this one is a murder mystery. Now in this one, the main character and her friend, they, are, they receive an email invite to another friend, a past friend who they haven't spoken with in over 10 years, they received an invite to her bachelorette party. And they're both kind of confused. They're like, okay, why is she sending us this invite if we haven't talked to her in so long? So they both make an agreement and they say, hey, if you go, then I'll go. And so they ended up going to the bachelorette party and it's in the woods. Now, some strange things begin to happen and someone ends up dead in the cabin and they go on a search in order to find out what happened. And there's a big investigation involved and I would say it's kind of a little bit predictable, but I did, I did have fun reading this one. So I thought that this was a pretty good average read. The next one is We Can Never Leave This Place and this is by Eric LaRocca. And I originally heard about this one on Deja's Book World channel. She does a lot of reviews on horror books, and I never know what to read when it comes to horror. But I thought that this was a pretty good book. So this one is very weird, and I was like, what the heck am I reading when I read this book? Because I never read anything really like this. It was very strange. It was kind of like a, a nightmarish dream, you know. But um, a dream that, you know, when you when you have those weird dreams and they just turn into something else weird and you don't know why or where that came from. In this one, the main character, she lives in a home with her mom. Their dad has recently passed. And after the passing, this is where it starts getting weird, like gets weird very early in the book. But a large spider comes in to comfort, um, comfort the family and try to help them to get over the loss of their dad. And so the spider, you know, as the story goes on, he's making webs and he later invites other creatures into the home, like big cockroaches. Um, I don't remember what else. There were some other weird creatures, but they were like uh, large creatures. He invited them into, into the home to try to help get over their loss. And then it takes a turn for the worse and I'm not gonna say what happens what happens next, but this is a really quick read. It's a little over a hundred pages, so I would recommend getting this one. Is I did enjoy it. I think I would pick up some other books by him as well. I'll just have to be prepared for the weirdness. I did see that he um, writes a lot of books that are kind of a little different. The next one is Murder Your Employer by Rupert Holmes, and this one is more of a dark academia book in which. Um, different people, they randomly are selected by people who are watching them or they find out about it from someone else about this school. Now, at this school, they teach you different ways to delete someone, meaning off someone. And in the book, that's the word that they use, delete. They have different courses that will teach you how to delete the person 
based on who it is and based on what method that you want to use. Now, when they take you to this school, you're blindfolded and they drug you and you have no idea where you're going. So they take a few days, it takes like three days. So you're really knocked out for three days until you make it to this school. And when you get there, you cannot leave. The only way that you can leave is when, you're, when it's time for you to graduate. And by graduating, that means that it's time for you to complete your thesis, which is to off the person that you want to delete. The main character, he wants to delete his employer. It talks about why he wanted to do it. And then it also tells the story of, it also follows, I think, like two or three other people. It follows their story as well and talks about who they want to delete. And it's not all employers. Some of them may be like past friends, a lover. Uh, some of them are employers and just different people and they, they are there for different reasons. When I was reading this, I was like, how did they research this? Like the author, where did he get all this information from? Because I don't know, I wouldn't be Googling some of the things that were in here and you know, <laughs> I wouldn't um, want that on my search history if I was him, but I don't know, how did he actually do this and what made him come up with this plot? That's what I'm wondering. Overall, I thought that this was an interesting book. It's something different from what I usually read. So how did I rate these books? You can also check out my reviews and my ratings on my Goodreads or my Storygraph, and those are listed in the links in my About section. Then some of all fears, 2.75 out of five. Ghost Eaters, 3.75 out of 5. Ring Shout, 2.75 out of 5. Tender is the Flesh, 3.5 out of 5. In a Dark Dark Wood, 3 out of 5. We Can Never Leave This Place, 3.5 out of 5. Murder Your Employer, 3.75 out of 5. I was really trying hard to get a five-star read and I didn't even get a four-star read for the month, but I did have a lot of fun with this. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you pick up some of these books as well and you enjoyed your October, your spooky season Halloween reads. And now I'm headed over to November for my nonfiction November. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.